In one of the previous episodes, I have explained the render passes that Blender's internal render engine gives us. I mentioned that there is at least one pass that is missing. The one that we will be mostly focusing on is the clean diffuse pass. What we are looking at right now is the diffuse pass rendered the Blender way. This is something that I call the colored diffuse pass, because the color information is burned into this pass. This shows us how the image would look like if we use just the direct lighting, meaning the only light sources that we have are the lamps that we place in our scene. This pass ignores the influence of other objects at all. It is natural that the objects block the light. And in this pass we don't have this influence, so we have no shadows. Natural behavior of the direct lighting looks like this, so here we as well see the shadows. We can immediately see that we have some trees somewhere over here, and those trees block the light. But let's focus on the diffuse pass alone. This colored diffuse pass doesn't show us the influence of the lamps, but the result of influence of those lamps on the colors that we specify in the materials. No matter if it's done by setting the material color, or if it's determined by the texture. Such pass gives us pretty high level of control, because we can, for example, render different diffuse passes that are influenced by different lamps or groups of the lamps. Then we can add those passes together and we have the influence of all of the lamps, but can control the intensity of the colors of those lamps individually in compositing. So we can control the lamps, but it's a little bit more difficult to control the colors. If only we had the clean diffuse pass without color information burned into it, we could control the energy of the lamps as well as easily change the colors of the materials before they are combined together. Let's say that this is one of the diffuse passes. We can very easily control the intensities of the lamps that influence this diffuse pass when we add the color RGB curves and control this point when we move it here it gives us exactly the same result as lowering the energy of the lamp here in the lamp settings. If we instead move it here, it's the same as increasing this energy. We can as well multiply this image by some color. If we multiply it by the white color, we don't change anything. But if we make it darker, it's as if we lower the energy of the lamp. Increasing the energy is a little bit more complicated, but we can do it as well here. We can manually set the RGB values to something higher than 1. Let's set it to 1.5 for each channel. And it gives us exactly the same result as we increased the energy of the lamps by 50%. If we change this color to something else than shades of gray, let's set it to something like this, it gives exactly the same result as we changed the color of the lamp here. Now we can imagine that we have more diffuse passes like separate diffuse passes for separate lamps, we can control those lamps individually like this, then add those results together and we get the resulting colored diffuse pass. The colors of the materials can also be controlled here to some extent. If we prepared everything properly, which means that we use white color for the lamps, it is not that difficult to change the color of the car paint here, for example. I have the access to the alpha channel of this, so if that's the diffuse pass, I can pass it through the mix node, mix it with some color, let's make it blue, then I can change the blending mode to color, and as the factor I can use the alpha channel of the car paint, and that's the result that I get. The color blending mode works such that the value of the original color doesn't change. So it doesn't really matter how bright is the color that we specify here in the lower socket. I make it very dark, or very bright, and as you can see, the final result doesn't change. So if I want to make this color a little bit brighter, I have to pass it through another node, like RGB curves, for example. Let's move this point somewhere here and limit the influence of this node only to this area. So as you can see, we can change the colors of the materials without having the access to the clean diffuse pass but it's not always very easy. And the other problem that we may face is that when we don't have the clean diffuse pass and we'll want to then include the environment lighting, for example, we will have to multiply this by the changed color pass, but the colors were changed 
using those nodes and only the colored diffuse pass. So in fact, we don't have the access to the modified color pass. So it's not always the good idea to change the color of the materials basing only on the colored diffuse pass. It's better to have the access to the clean diffuse pass. That's the colored diffuse pass and the pass that we want to create looks like this. Here we don't have any color information. At first it may seem that the only thing that we have to do to create this one is make this one black and white. Let's try to do it and see what happens. That's the result that we get. And as you can see it's not the same as this one. We may think that maybe instead of using RGB to black and white node we could use the value of this image but that will also not give us the result that we want. So let's forget about it. If we used the lamps that have some other color than white color those colors of the lamps would show up here in this clean diffuse pass but the colors of the materials would be ignored. As you already know I try to prepare my scenes such that I don't use any other colors of the lamps than white. That's why my clean diffuse passes are just black and white. If we have this and the color pass that looks like this we can multiply one by the other and we get this and it's as you can see exactly the same as the colored diffuse pass. But here we can very easily control the color pass alone or the influence of the lamps. Okay, so when we look at what we are doing here, we can try to do some math. We take the clean diffuse and multiply it by the color. So that's what we are doing. We take the color, multiply it by the clean diffuse and we get the colored diffuse. The things that we are given by default is this one, the colored diffuse and the color. What we try to create is the clean diffuse. It may seem that it's not that difficult to solve this equation such that we have something like this. Clean diffuse is equal the colored diffuse divided by the color. But you will notice that it's not always true. Let's for the moment imagine that the color value equals zero. Clean diffuse equals five. Then if we take those values and put them here we get zero times five equals zero, right? So we have the colored diffuse that is equal zero. If those are the values and this equation is true, the operation colored diffuse divided by the color should give us five. But colored diffuse is zero. Color is zero as well. It's impossible to divide by zero. That's the first thing. But even if the mix node has the way to solve this issue, dividing by zero, it's simply impossible to get this value when we use such equation. Okay, but that's the mathematical blah 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 blah. Let's try to see it in action. That's our colored diffuse pass and that's our color pass. Let's divide one by the other and see what happens. Color mix, divide blending mode, take the colored diffuse, divide it by the color and that's our result. And as you can see we have several issues here. First, is that in this area we have some color. Those are not the shades of gray. As well as here, here. When we take a look at the values of this color for example you see that the blue channel is very high. It's almost three. We have some issues here. The values of those pixels are crazy or this one. We have some negative values. Here in this area we also have the problems. This color here is caused by my mistake. I didn't properly set the color of this material. I have set the blue channel to zero. But those areas, this area and here have problems because of anti-aliasing. Those are the edges of some sort and anti-aliasing mixed the surrounding colors so they don't want to mix together nicely. In one of the previous episodes I told you that it's not that difficult to create the clean diffuse pass. The only thing we have to do is to set all of the materials colors to white and then render something like this. But wait a minute, we have several materials here. We would have to create the copies of all of the objects, make the duplicates of the materials, change the colors of them. If there are any textures we would have to remove them. It's a lot of work and sometimes 20 layers that are available in Blender would be not enough. We could try to make one universal material, white material, that we would use as the material overwrite 
for some of the render layers. But we are not always using the same shader model. Sometimes we have some bump maps. So chances are that none of those options will work. Let me now show you another way. I will base on this solution, dividing color diffuse by the color pass. We can very easily get rid of those colors here. We can take the values of those colors. The value of the color is the value of the highest channel. And that's great because in fact that's the value of the energy that hits this particular surface. So we can separate HSVA, plug it here and take the value. All of the colors disappeared, we have only the shades of gray, which is perfect. But we didn't get rid of the problems here, in those areas or here. When we take a look at the values of those colors, we see that here we have 2.7, here we also have something crazy, so that's not good enough. But let's zoom in here, take a look at the values of this pixel. Right now we are looking at the result of all those operations, but let's take a look at the diffuse pass alone. That's the value of this pixel and the color pass. When we take a look at the blue channel of it, we see that it has the negative value. We didn't set any color to have negative values, but this is caused by anti-aliasing. I have used the Gaussian filter for anti-aliasing and this filter can give us such weird results, but we can rather easily get rid of this. In one of the previous episodes, I showed you the group of nodes that can clamp the values. I have the group called clamp black. When I expand it, you see what it's made of. And the result of passing the image through this group is that we get rid of all of the negative values. Everything below zero will become zero. So let's plug it here between the color pass and this one. And immediately this color looks reasonable. Those areas here seem pretty okay. When we take a look here, we still have some issues, but let's see what happens if we as well clamp the diffuse pass, the color diffuse pass. It didn't solve those problems, but we are closer to something that we can work with. This is, however, not the best solution. Let me show you another way. I will not divide the colors. I will not use the mix node. But I will do something else. I will first extract the values. So let's take the value of the diffuse pass, then take the value of the color pass, value of the diffuse pass, value of the color pass. Let's divide one by the other, but this time I will use converter math, change the operation to divide, take the value of the diffuse pass and divide it by the value of the color pass. And immediately we see that we got rid of most of the issues. But let's try to go a little bit further. Before I do this, let's clamp the black level of those values. So I will use the vector map value, use minimum of zero, plug it here and here. And the result that I get looks a little bit better. This solution is not perfect, but the result is good enough to be able to work with it. This of course will never reflect the color of the lamps that we use. But as I said, it's better to use white lamps and change the colors of them in compositing. So this limitation shouldn't be a problem. But we have yet another issue and I explained it in the episode about the issues with shadow pass. It's good to have the clean diffuse pass, but it would be better to have it combined with the shadows. When we prepare our render layer, we can exclude all of the passes from the combined pass. We cannot exclude the diffuse pass, the color pass, but all of those can be excluded. So this render layer can be used to create the proper reflection pass, to create the environment light and ambient occlusion, but those passes are excluded from the combined pass, specular as well, but I have included shadows into the combined pass. This way, my combined pass looks like this. And I would call this one the colored direct lighting. When we take a look at the setup here, you see that as the inputs I have used the colored diffuse pass and the color pass. But here, instead of using the colored diffuse pass, I can use the combined pass created this way. And this is my result. When we create something like this, we will not face the problems with the shadow pass. We will be able to change the energy and the color of the lamps that are used here, as well as the colors of the materials. So that's our clean direct lighting. We can very easily now group those nodes and add another light sources like environment light. 
that looks like this. Let's add the environment light to the direct light. We of course don't have to use this high factor. Let's use something more reasonable like 0.2 or even a little bit lower 0.15. And that's the sum of all of the light sources that can be multiplied by the color. So let's change the blending mode to multiply here. Take this one and multiply it by the color. And that's the result that we get. But here we have to use the factor of 1. Now we will be able to easily add another elements like specular, reflections. Then of course we will have to play with this, adjust the factors, the colors of those passes and finally achieve the result that we want. So that's the solution that creates our clean direct lighting pass.